Hello and welcome back to Catch and Cook California. I'm Kevin. And today is a little throwback to the winter of 2022. We're headed out on my dad's boat with my best friend Alex. We're going for rockfish, we're going for Dungeness crab, then I'm gonna meet up with my girl Diane and we're gonna go dig for steamer clams and pick mussels and make an absolutely one of a kind paella. Let's go. Start dropping our uh, our crab hoops. Crab going over. Oh, I, I was down at the bottom and then just reeled up a little bit. And then I was just letting the boat be the motion. Yep, fish on. What do we got? Oh yeah. Nice, man. It's a nice canary. Beauty. All right. That's a real nice fish, dude. All right. Yeah. Well, that thing works. All right, boys. No skunk. Fish on. He was right on the bottom too. Yeah, this guy's got some fight in him, man. Oh, yeah, there we go. Beauty. Yeah, buddy. Try uh, one of these swim baits. Yeah. Nice. Well, we're all going home with some fish. Hey, nice, nice canary. Swing it on in. Swing it on in. Swing it on in. Swing it on in. <laughs> nice, dude. Nice. <laughs> Very big one. This one looks like a. That's a brown. brown. Maybe. Yeah, it's got the black spot yeah, on. Brown. Get that. What should we do? Keep him or throw him back? Up to you, man. His eyes are good. It's probably another canary. Oh, baby link. Oh, oh that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. In the eye. Yeah, he's only 18. Bye bye. Oh yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, there's some big ones in there, dude. <laughs> nice. All right, man. Nice. That one dude, that is fun. huge, bro. Boom. That is a gauge buster, dude. That's a gauge buster. <laughs> and the other grab and all put it in the okay. ice chest. That's a near a gauge buster. Yep. They say crabbing is easy, but it's not not the case. <laughs> Oh yeah, felt like it had some weight to it. Should drop this again. Some big boys too. <laughs> Sweet. It's pretty awesome, man. It's another gauge buster. Sweet. Nice. All right. That's limits, boys. Woo! Woo! <laughs> well done. All right, that's the last trap. All but two or three are legal, but we're at our limits, so we got to throw them all back. <laughs> That's four, five, three, four, three, five, thirty. 30. Okay, the rest go over. How many? One, two, three, four. That was a good one. Boom! Yes. Yeah! <laughs> Woo! <-hoo! laughs> That's three limits. It is uh, almost three minutes to noon. So we're going to go fishing again. <laughs> muscles as the tide's going out then we'll switch to clams that's the size I'm looking for I don't want them much bigger than this but I don't want them much smaller than this so bay mussels like these are actually real easy to harvest even compared to the uh, the open coast California mussel the reason being they're used to this very low energy environment back here so they didn't really need to adapt in the same way as the open coast California mussel they don't have to withstand constant surf instead it's as you can see back here this bay water just barely lapping. So that makes them a lot easier to harvest. As with any mussel, I always harvest just a little here, a little there. We're not stripping the rock. We don't want to leave bald patches. It looks ugly and it's harder for the mussels to continue to populate that rock. So just pick a few here and there, don't strip patches. The goal of the process here is to bring home some delicious food and to keep it sustainable as we're doing it. You do need a valid California fishing license in order to harvest these. You're only allowed 10 pounds wet weight per day per person. 10 pounds of mussels is way more mussels than you could possibly eat. I can pretty much guarantee you that. Maybe I'll make a t-shirt like 
I survived the 10 pounds of muscles eating challenge. <laughs> anyway, the other thing I always like to emphasize is the safety aspect. So be sure to call the biotoxin information hotline, which is 800-553-4133. And that'll let you know if it's safe to harvest uh, any kind of shellfish in your area. So what I usually do is I'll take about 10, 15 in one spot, kind of like as far as I can reach, and then I'll just move down about 10 feet and keep harvesting, and that way, when you come back through, you will never even know. You can take a look at this rock and you'll never even know that I've been here. For finding steamer clams, one of the first things I look for is a whole bunch of abandoned dead shells. You can see Diane digging here, and you can see the remnants of a hole that she's already filled back in. She's done it the right way by refilling it with gravel and sand and mud. But these holes in the background here are from the previous day. You can see someone did not fill in their holes, which is why it looks like a tide pool here. Those little tide pools are not the way we do this. They can actually heat up in the sun and it can kill the juvenile clams left in them. So you can see Diane is working the edge of this hole here and she's just kind of very carefully raking away a little bit of gravel and a little bit of sediment a little piece at a time, just one piece at a time. And this is allowing her to expose steamer clams as she comes across them one by one without crushing them. My technique is a little bit faster, but again, every sweep of that shovel, I'm looking in the side wall of the hole to make sure that I'm not gonna sweep back through and crush the steamer clam. The little ones I keep setting aside, those are juveniles, and I'll be reburying those later. Anything large enough, I'm gonna gauge and see if it's legal. If it's not, it goes in the juvenile pile. If it is, then it goes in my keeper pile. I'll get a legal clam here and there, and I just gauge each one individually. Remember, they have to be one and a half inches. Not quite. So it goes over here with my stack of babies. We were just remarking on how happy it made us to see all the young ones here, uh, because it means that it is a healthy fishery. So we're gonna keep reburying those young ones and keep digging up these big ones. And as of the making of this video, you're allowed 50 per person per day. Those juveniles though that I keep talking about, you've got to rebury those, and it's very important that you rebury them in a specific way. The reason that it's important to rebury these is when the tide comes in, so do the rays. And stingrays, bat rays, etc. will go through and they actually sift through the sand and mud to try to eat clams. If you don't rebury the juveniles, those are sitting on the surface and they're very easy for these rays to go through and eat. The reason that there's a minimum size limit for steamer clams is steamer clams have to reach an inch and a half before they have actually reproduced. So if we leave a bunch of undersized clams on the surface and we don't rebury them, then when the tide comes in, the rays eat all of the undersized ones before they get a chance to reproduce. Or in other words, we're killing the fishery. It's not just the rays at high tide that are gonna be eating those steamer clams. We're only legally allowed to clam until a half an hour after sunset. When our low tides are in the evening, you may have to be off the beach while the tide is still way out. That means that as soon as you leave, your presence will be replaced by some of the most efficient nocturnal foragers in North America. If you don't rebury those young ones, those raccoons will go through and they will eat every single one of those young clams you've left exposed. It's basically the same thing as crushing all of those juveniles before they reproduce. And I can guarantee you that the next time you come to that beach, it's gonna be less productive. And if we do that year after year, we will totally destroy the fishery of that beach. If we want this fishery to be around for our kids, our grandkids and great grandkids, we've got to do our part here and now. Once you've repaired the beach after digging your clams, the next step is to rinse them thoroughly in salt water. I usually rinse them three or four times and then I transport them back to my house in salt water. You can leave them in the salt water overnight and they will purge out some of the additional sand that they have. You can't soak them in fresh water, it has to be salt water and we're ready to break out my grandma's old paella pan and cook the family recipe. Bye. Uh -huh.
I am so excited. So excited while we were cooking, I forgot to add the fish. So I guess we're gonna have to do fish tacos tomorrow. <laughs> but uh, I'm hungry. Yeah, I'm super hungry. I don't want to talk too much. Diane, please dig in, dig in. Dungeness crab. We got our steamer clams. We got our our bay mussels. We got some chicken in here. Um, the chorizo. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. The chorizo is the backbone. Um, this is my, my family recipe. My mom always starts with a little bit of Mexican chorizo and a little bit of Spanish chorizo. It's key. Really, really good. Mmm. Mmm. Immediate flavor. Mmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Some clam. Mmm. I wish mm. we were camping. I know, right? Muscle. Mmm. Chorizo. Mmm. 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 Little Dungeness crab. It's so good. Mm. <laughs> I love crab. It's so good. Well, we're just going to sit here and polish this whole thing off. We hope you enjoyed watching this episode, and uh, we love hearing back from you. So please leave a comment and uh, like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And until next time, keep the old ways alive. For those who are interested, I am still guiding for clamming, freedive spearfishing, and a whole bunch more. So if you're interested, hit me up. All right. All right. Was clamming Woo. a success? Yes. 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 That's what I'm talking Get about. Get it on deck. <laughs> Damn. We're making out like gauge busters. <laughs>